In this video, we will talk about shader optimization for complex assets. For this, we will use V-Ray's multi-subtexture node to combine multiple shaders into just one super shader that enables us to make faster and more efficient adjustments. So here we are on one of my personally most favorite websites ever for 3D artists, and that is polyhaven.com, which is a public 3D asset library. And many of you guys might still know them as hdrihaven.com, and that's how they initially started. So you could always download some high quality spherical HDRIs here to use completely for free in your personal and even commercial work. So huge shout out to them, really, really awesome service. And over the years, they also added different kind of categories and rebranded as Polyhaven. And you could also now download, for example, PBR textures, so you can build some great shaders in here. And there's even now, or since a while already here, a page where you can download some high quality 3D assets to use in your most favorite 3D application. So in this video here, I thought I would show you my personal process of how I would deal with a complex asset like this in here, shader-wise in 3ds Max and V-Ray. And as you can see, there's a lot of different textures which are associated with this model in here. And we want to try to build a shader that is as simple and easy to deal with as possible. So for this, we can download here the model. And I basically just use the FBX because that's easiest to import in 3ds Max and V-Ray. And I also downloaded here all of the different textures. So here we're in 3ds Max where I built a simple dummy scene with a simple lighting setup and imported the ship model as an FBX and also went in and grouped here the different textures into different subfolders. For example, we have seven kind of diffuse maps, which all look very similar. We have four metalness maps. We have seven normal maps and also seven roughness maps. And then we have one alpha map here that basically cuts some small holes here into the sail. So as you can see, there are some textures already applied to the model after the import. And that's because it's saved like this in the FBX file that we downloaded. But those come in as standard 3ds Max physical materials. And I went in already and used the V-Ray scene converter where you can convert physical materials to V-Ray materials then you also have them as Vera materials. So let me open the material editor and I populated already these slots here with the different materials that I used to basically render this ship in here. You can see at the moment, there's like seven different shaders required to basically shade and render this whole asset in here. So while this does work to some extent, as you can see, it easily becomes very frustrating if you have to do some overall changes on the whole asset. So let's say, for example, you're unhappy about the saturation of your textures. You want to increase or decrease the gamma for whatever reason. Then you would need to do that in one shader and then replicate the same process here in different shaders. So let's say, for example, I want to raise the gamma of the whole ship for some reason. Let me use some extreme values so that you can see what we're doing. Basically, if I do this in this shader, it only does that in this part here, of course. I would need then to go in and do the same kind of changes here for all of the different parts. And I said that easily becomes very annoying. Let's say, for example, you want to overlay some dirt effects then the easiest way is to not do that in each shader here separately, but to build one shader for our whole asset. Let's just select here this asset and apply the shader that I already pre-built. And then you can easily do some overall adjustments. Let's say, for example, I want to change here the reflectivity of the whole object, or I want to increase the bump amount. Then you can just do that in one shader and basically it's done here in the whole asset. And let's say also we can increase the gamma to stay consistent what we try to do with this shader here. You can see those changes are applied now to the whole object instead of just one small part here of the object. So that's what I want to show you in this video here, how we can build a shader that basically collects all of the different textures and applies a one shader solution to a whole asset so that we can do some overall broad adjustments without having to deal with lots of individual shaders in here.
Before we can collapse everything into one shader though, we have to prepare our asset in a certain way. Let me switch this one here to the object color. And now you can see that I basically went in already and split up the whole model into seven different parts, which all correlate with the seven different shaders here, of course. So we would then need to go in and assign different kind of materialities for all of those parts. So let's go to the first part and give this one here a material ID of one. And then for the next part, I gave it a material ID of two. The next one, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So I basically prepared this in here already to save a little bit of time. So now the different parts of our asset have a different material ID. We can use this material ID now to assign the correct texture sets to those material IDs. So now I switch to the slate material editor. And at the moment, we still have our seven separate shaders going on for the ship. But let's change that now. Let's select the whole ship. Let's assign here a completely empty gray V-Ray material to everything. You can see that now, of course, all of the textures are lost, but we're going to bring them back in again. And for this, we're going to be using one of my most favorite nodes in V-Ray. And that is the V-Ray Multi Subtexture. I have already a tutorial in my channel that you can also find that explains this node here a little bit in a different context. You can also use that to randomize some parts of your models. But in this context here, we're going to be using that to basically assign the correct texture maps to the correct parts in our model. So in our case, it's important that we have this option here enabled, get ID from face material ID, because we assign seven different face material IDs to our different objects. We could also assign different object IDs, or we could even use a random distribution, which in this case, of course, makes no sense because then the texture would be randomly applied to the different objects. So in our case, let's stick with the face material ID in here. Now we can go in and pipe all of the different textures into those different IDs in here, which would be a little bit tedious. So luckily there is this batch load option and we can add a folder. So I have the different textures here laid out in different folders. So let's go to the diffuse folder and let's select all of those different diffuse textures. So you can see we have seven different diffuse texture. Let's open them and let's just press this OK button in here. And now you can see that those seven diffuse textures are now applied here to seven different material IDs. And if I now connect this here into the diffuse slot of the shader, you can see that everything here now works by just controlling all of the different textures through one V-Ray multi subtexture in here. So now let's see some of the advantages. So for example, we can easily just put here a simple color correction in between. And once we do this, then this color correction basically applies to all of the textures which come behind. So we could, for example, increase the gamma here, like I showed you earlier, we can increase the saturation or decrease it, for example, or we could even go in and completely shift our U if we wanted to. So those are some examples where we basically can save a lot of time by just distributing those changes here to a whole set of different textures. And in here, I prepared another example. So here I just have this simple dirt material which I just put into the diffuse map. So you can see we have these kind of like dirt splatches in here. And we could then put, for example, a new layer and move this to the bottom and then put our multi subtexture into this and then flip here the blending mode to something like multiply, for example. And now you can see that these kind of dirt patches would be applied across our whole asset, across our whole textures here, basically. So that's also a good way how you can easily save some time by basically distributing those changes here to this whole subset of textures. So now let's load our normal maps. And for this, let's increase here the bump map intensity to 100. And let's put a V-Ray normal map node in here. And then in this node, let's use again a V-Ray multi subtexture. And inside here, we need to batch load our normal map again, of course. So let's go into the folder with the normal maps, select all of the normal maps in here. 
and press OK. And once you do this, you can see there's something weird here going on. And the reason for that is that the normal maps are not loaded correctly if you go through the batch loader. So normally, if you just pipe a single texture map into this normal map slot, then it would know that this is a normal map and it would automatically basically change here the color space transfer function to none because they would need to be loaded as linear. You can see once I do this, then also this small preview here changes. And now let's do this here for all of the different textures. So let's switch all of them here to none so that all of our normal maps here are loaded correctly. When I'm doing this, you can see that here, step by step, all of the parts are loaded correctly. So the last one would be the one for the sales. So you can see how the sales look at the moment. And now let's switch this one here to none. And now this is fixed and the normal map here is loaded now correctly also for this part. We can then go back to our shader and here we can use, for example, higher values to increase the intensity of the normal map. And then this one would be transferred to all of the parts here of our ship. I think in the sail you can see it the best, but I think intensity of 500 would be too much. Let's use, for example, something like 150 to have some of the normal map intensity here or the normal map details showing through basically for our ship. So now we can deal with our reflections. Let's increase the reflectivity all the way to 100%. And since we have roughness maps, we shouldn't really be using this glossiness workflow. Let's switch that to the roughness workflow. And then let's add here a V-Ray multi subtexture again. Let's move this one down here. And then inside, let's batch load all of the different roughness maps. So those would be those ones in here. Press OK. Once we do this, then everything here is set up accordingly already. We better make sure to double check how those bitmaps here are loaded because the roughnet map also should be loaded as linear because it just contains data. So we have to make sure that our color space transfer function here is set to none. And let's do this for all of the different textures in here to just make sure that the roughness maps are loaded the way they were intended to be loaded. So far, we dealt with the diffuse, normal and roughness map. And in each of those folders, we always had seven textures for our seven different IDs. And now in case of the metalness map, for example, we only have four textures in here. And in case of the alpha map, we even only have one texture because the alpha map here just describes that there are some holes and this should only be applied to our sales. So the question is, how do we deal in this case with the V-Ray multi subtexture. So let's try that out with the opacity. Let's put a simple V-Ray multi subtexture in here. And you can see that inside you can define the amount of slots. In our case, we just would need one slot because we only have one texture map in here. And then the slot ID should be seven because that's the ID that we set up for our sales. And now you have a default slot and our slot that we defined here. And you can, for example, give the default slot here the value of black. And then basically everything that is not sales will be completely transparent. But in our case, we would want to, of course, have these parts here fully opaque. And then in the slot number seven, we just load our V-Ray bitmap and load our alpha map for the sales in here. And now you can see that in the sales, we have these holes here showing up which are coming from the alpha map. And we don't have those parts here anywhere on the other parts of our ship because basically we just mask out here ID 7. So for the metalness where we only have four textures available, we can use the same workflow. We can define four different slots, put our default slot to black because we don't have any metalness here, for example, the sails and so on. And then we have to load the four different slots and assign the correct ID. In my case, that's one, three, four, and six, and then load the correct textures in here. And now we can put the metalness multi subtexture into the metalness slot here of our shader. And then those parts which should have metalness, they also receive them correctly through this multi subtexture in here. 
So you saw how fast it was to basically combine a complicated shader setup into just one shader using this simple workflow in here. And I hope you learned something from that and can use this in your future project. As usual, you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon if you want to try it out for yourself. And you can also find a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies if you're interested in that. So check that out if that's useful to you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.